Well, what is up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Champion School. I'm your host, Austin Byler, Major League University, Dean Wellams, Team Elite Performance. And then we got our special guest, Hannah Huseman, um, Philadelphia Phillies Middle Skills Coordinator, um, former Division I softball and basketball athlete, which is really cool. We'll get into a lot of that. But doing a lot of the mindset work, working on the mind, working on those mental skills as far as helping athletes on and off the field. And not just athletes, entrepreneurs, businessmen and women, actors, actresses, all the above. And I think everything that we do directly correlates to real life. And that's the, the reason why I'm looking forward to this the most is because we get to learn from you today. We get to take a seat, get the pen and pad out, start to learn a little bit and get to upgrade our skills. So for anybody in here, if you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. Um, I got a few that were emailed that we can get to as we get going. Um, we'll be about an hour. We'll get this thing rolling. But before we get rolling, I want to give a special shout out to Always Grind. Um, some of the greatest people in the world. Joe Maroney doing incredible things. Our official sponsor. We got these incredible coaches and players notebooks. Um, Always Grind provides professional baseball notebooks that allow both players and coaches to gain the competitive edge and develop baseball IQ used by MLB organizations, big leaguers, Power Five conferences, and other top programs across the country. Uh, Always Grind notebooks are blueprints for ball players to maximize their potential by capturing real-time data in athletes' day-to-day -day activities. I love it, I use it myself. Uh, visit alwaysgrind365.com to see our list of AG partners as well as specific page breakdowns of each individual notebook. Always Grind offers free custom covers and discounting pricing for teams and orgs. Um, for more information, you can follow Always Grind 365, all social media platforms, and be sure to use the promo code AG365. We'll throw it in the chat at the end of this on the website um, if you guys want to get that discount. So to throw in more about Always Grind, that was the script. I'm going to go off script because I hate scripts. I can't stand it. Joe is incredible. Incredible. He didn't ask me to say this. I love Joe. He's absolutely incredible. One man workhorse doing incredible things. Like I said, he's got these incredible things and he's doing a lot of really good for the athletes being able to chart what we do. So um, without further ado, let's get rolling. I'm Hannah, but Hannah, I want to get into your story. One, welcome to the show. Two, I want to get into your story and what led to what you do now, because I think it's always interesting listening to different people in this, this field of how they got there. And there's usually like one factor or one experience that totally just kicked it off. Like what was that experience for you like and how did you get to the point where you're at now with the Phillies? Yeah, so I'm pumped to be here with you guys tonight. Um, first and foremost, thanks for having me. Um, but so I'll just kind of start from the beginning. Um, so just born and raised in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so always kind of been down south. Um, and um, kind of battled, like played softball and basketball my entire life um, growing up, played a lot of other sports too, but really like dwindled it down to those two being the main ones that I was most passionate about and physically best at. Um, and so I actually went to the University of Tennessee Chattanooga and played basketball my freshman year um, and had a really um, life altering experience to put it lightly and in a positive spin. Um, there was a lot of hard moments, a lot of real moments, a lot of tough moments. And it was um, at the end of that season when I kind of had to make a tough decision of what I was going to do. Was I going to continue playing basketball, stay at that school, change schools, drop sports forever, maybe play softball because I played softball competitively up until my senior year of high school, like including travel ball. And so I actually went and talked to the softball coach at UTC, UT Chattanooga. And he was like, come on, like we have a spot for you. I had talked to him um, before I'd even signed. And so it was like, the weirdest situation but I was like you know what I've like kind of made my friends I've had my classes didn't really want to start over from scratch in college and so ended up just switching sports so played softball my sophomore junior senior year um there and it was amazing and I actually so it's funny nobody's ever asked for like a life-altering moment but if I had to pick one it would have been my senior year um I took sports psych as an elective Mm. And I like, didn't really know, but I was like, this kind of sounds like kind of cool. Like maybe not too difficult. I'm an athlete, you know, like I can kind of make my way through it. Like it was just my senior year. I was ready to go. And I took it and had an amazing professor. And all of a sudden I was just like truly head over heels for this stuff. I was like, why have we not had anybody teach us this? Like I, this, I've been here four years and we have had nothing, you know, and like, how can I learn everything I can about it? And it just kind of, kind of took over so my undergrad degree was in exercise science you know because again like sports has kind of been my whole life and I knew I wanted to stay in sports I just didn't know to what capacity um, whether I was going to be a coach or a strength coach which I thought I was going to be for a while um, and then I took this class and I was like holy shit like 
this is it. Like, I want to be a coach, but maybe I didn't know what kind of coach. And now I'm a mental skills coach. So it's really cool how that kind of played out. But anyway, I did a lot of research and found a super applied program, um, which is, is really hands on at the University of Tennessee. So again, like Nashville, Chattanooga, Knoxville, like just went up the road. Um, and did got my master's there in kinesiology um, with a concentration in sports psychology and motor behavior, which is just a really fancy way of how the mind and the body work together to produce optimal performance. So we, you know, I had studied the body. Now I got to study the mind and how and why the body does what it does. Um, and had an incredible experience there. Did a, a professional junior golf in, internship graduated, did uh, my first internship was with the Pittsburgh Pirates, which was awesome and so cool. And then I actually moved to New York City and worked for a private practice there, which I work with um, performers of all kinds. So not just athletes, like you had mentioned earlier, actors, actresses, firefighters, FDNY. That's one of the coolest things, um, one of the coolest jobs I've ever done. Um, and CEOs of companies and surgeons. And so that was really cool pushing me outside of my comfort zone of sports and the sports world and really seeing how you know, it's not just sports psychology, it's performance psychology and how this can help any performers. And if you know anything about me, you know that I think if you're a human being and you're living and you're breathing, you're a performer to some aspect, whether you're a parent, whether you're a spouse, whether you have a job, like whatever, we're always performing, which means we can always build our, those mental skills towards performance. So, um, that was, that kind of lit that passion that it's so much more than just sport. Um, but then I realized I really, really liked the team aspect of it all. And, and being in something that's way bigger than me. And so I kind of started looking back into the baseball world um, and had a couple opportunities and ended up signing with the Phillies. Um, and I'm going on my third year um, as a mental skills coach for them. So that's kind of my story. Let's go. I'm fired up. Your energy is yeah. pumping me up. I love energy. Yeah. As people across the world, like our energy can, can translate. And yes, we're all probably getting a little zoomed out right now, but even on Zoom, you can feel the energy, feel the passion behind what you do and why you do it, which is incredible. Yeah. I want to get in. There's so many different ways we can go. But Dean, I'm going to ask this last question. I'll kick it to you. But I want to ask this question because I think it's very interesting that you said we're all performers, whether you're mm -hmm. a teacher, whether you're a strength coach, whether you're a head coach or a manager in the big leagues, or you're a mental skills coach, you are a performer in some aspect. And that really hits home because anything you do, you've got to be at your peak performing level. Now, what are some commonalities that maybe you teach to a baseball specific athlete compared to a CEO and how do those correlate with each other? Yeah, so it's, it's almost all of them. Like it really is like, it's just the context beneath it, right? So like a surgeon has to have goals, a firefighter has to have goals, but the, the one that stands out the most to me is um, I was working with firefighters and one of the two biggest things that they really had to learn was to be in the present moment and to control their breathing, right? They have, they're, they're knocking down a door with like a screaming kid on the other side, right? If they're worried about, is this kid going to make it? Is this going to happen? Where's the mom? What's this kid's story, right? They're not going to be like fully invested in that moment. And so it was like, it was so cool because they like, their stakes are so much higher than like, hitting your finding the right pitch to hit but mm -hmm. it was the same exact concept right and and like they have had the training and it's really cool too because you talk to major league professional athletes and they were like I would never run into a building on fire right and then you talk to firefighters and they were like I would never try to perform in front of thousands and thousands of fans and so there's this like really cool mutual respect on both sides but also like giving them examples of each other doing the same thing and practicing the same things are really, really, really cool. So I would, I would say those are kind of the two biggest things. And, and I mean, same goes with the surgeon, right? If you're too busy worried about an outcome or what's going to happen or failing, like you're not going to be at your best in that moment. And so it's almost, it's like present moment breathing to get you into the present moment and then just like slowing things down and really making sure you're, focusing on the things that you can actually do in that very moment, right? Controlling the controllables. Like you're, you'll hear me say a lot of the cliche sports psych isms, I guess, if you will, but it's, there's usually so much more under that, that gets you to that point. And I think that that's what's commonly missed. Everyone's like control the controllables, be where your feet are, like all of that. But it's like, what does that mean? And how do we do it? That's the bottom of the iceberg. And that's, that's one of my biggest passions is like, we're not just going to like feel good, motivate each other and walk out the door. Like we're going to try to change your intern, like your internal motivations and what like really gets you going. And, and 
that's what I'm super passionate about. And I just have to say this too, because everybody always asks me, and this goes back to you just saying, I love your enthusiasm. How do you get your job? How do you do this? What do I need to do? And I always say the same two things. And it's like, one is being confident in your ability and mm -hmm. two is being enthusiastic about your job. So every, every person, every job that I've gone to, that's the feedback that I've gotten. It's like, you're so enthusiastic about this. And I'm like, I literally love this. Like, like I, I truly do. And I, I, I'm a firm believer that if you're enthusiastic about what you do and you're also confident in your own ability, especially in this field, right? You can't be a mental performance coach teaching confidence and not be confident yourself when you're standing in front of a room. Um, even though there's moments when I absolutely do not feel confident when I'm, when I'm talking to coaches and staff who have been in baseball for four longer than twice as long as I've been alive. Like, of course I'm like, like, you know, I'm bowing down to you. Like you're the, you're the guru of it all. But at the same time, it's, it's like, I'm still confident in my ability. And I'm also confident that you and I can work together to figure something out and grow together. And so I just wanted to throw that little piece out there. Oh, that's a hashtag. If, you, if, you, if you're not familiar yet with this, there's a lot of hashtag wisdom <laughs> of the day being dropped. And that's a wisdom bomb <laughs> right there on your end. That fires me up. And I think like two things you mentioned, the, the confidence piece, you can totally tell that you're confident in the abilities to be able to relate. And then I think another piece to this is the vulnerability and connectability to the athletes. And whether you're an athlete, a CEO, an actress, actor, whatever you do, it doesn't matter what you do you as a person are able to connect with them and you can tell just how passionate you are behind that, that people are going to connect with that and be receptive for what you have to offer. And I think that's what separates the average from the really good. Cause there's a lot of people in the field that do this and who can say these cliche terms, but if you don't have the confidence behind it and you don't have the, the energy and the passion that is flowing out of you, nobody's going to give a crap. Like we're all just going to be like, yeah. never. like I've heard it before. Right. Um, yeah. Go ahead and kick it off, my man. No, I, I agree with what Austin said in terms of, of, of confidence and energy. And I love that you put it into those, those, two, those two terms. In fact, I, just, I literally just saw this quote today and it said, bring us the right mindset and we'll take care of the skill set. And, and so it's that I'm same thing. I know I was like, oh my God, another bomb, you know, a little hashtag bomb there. So but when you love said that. that, I was like, oh dude, yeah, just, you know, just like you said, like, what do I do? What do I do to get into it? Bring them the right mindset. And, you know, because right. you know, the confidence is a mindset, the you know, the, the having the right energy. I mean, all those things are, you know, just, just a simple, just a simple mindset. So let me ask you yeah. this, um, kind of, kind of like, um, like backing up just a little bit too. <clears throat> and I'm sure that, I mean, something that I've kind of like really noticed in, in this world in the last, and I don't even know what the right year frame of it is, is that just the, the discussion, the, the, the talking of mental health and bringing it more to the forefront. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's a, you know, it's gone from a, almost like, don't talk about it to a no man. Like we have to be talking about this stuff. And I heard, I heard, and you know, Brett McCabe, um, he, oh, yeah. he, yeah, so you know that name, and he, I remember listening to one of his podcasts, it was probably a year ago, and he made this, like, brilliant point, he said, you know, we, 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 we go to a, you know, most people go to a dentist a couple times a year, we go get a health checkup, we whatever, and he said, but the fact that we don't have, like, a, a healthcare plan that, like, you know, has people going and doing, you know, getting mental skills training, going and talking, you know, all those kind of things, he said, because we, you know, unfortunately, we treat mental health, like, it, it's when the, when the fire starts, and the house is burning down, then we all want to go do something about it. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of, a lot of setup there for my, my question. So in, in terms of, and I, I was, you know, I was doing a little bit of reading on some of the things that you talk about and things like that. And obviously follow your Twitter page, which coaches everybody that's listening out there, make sure you're doing that. She does these super cool, um, metal sweat Mondays. Is that what they're, do I have the term right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. And like, but, but I love it because it's that concept of like, I, it's that little phrase, do a little, a lot. And mm -hmm. so my, my kind of first question for you is in terms of thinking about this, this idea of working on these kind of things as a, as a regular basis, as opposed to waiting until the house is burning down. So, you know, I, I, you know, the example you talked about with the firefighters, which is, you know, like you said, it's all applicable stuff. What are some of the ways that, um, you know, that, that, that maybe you get, get that, you know, kind of bring that across to people, how important that is, that, that it's a daily thing, you know, just for some of these coaches that are listening that, you know, saying, yeah, how do I get that across to my athlete that, no, we don't want to work on this, you know, when you need it, like, let's work on it, you know, as, as a regular uh, you know, on a regular thing. So is that like yeah. so kind of a, kind of like 17 questions all at once, but take your <laughs> shot at them in whatever okay. order you want to go at. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I think you're absolutely right. And one of, it's funny, you, you, Brett McKay mentioned um, Dennis, because that's one of the examples I use all the time is, you know, way back when, right, you only went to the dentist when your teeth were falling out, like when your teeth were literally right. rotting and coming out of your head. And at some point, someone was like, hmm, maybe we should go to the dentist 
twice a year to get cleanings and then our teeth will never fall out. And so it's the same concept. And one way we really try to do that and I've always tried to do is a very proactive approach rather than reactive approach. And obviously like some athletes are like, ah, like a little more hesitant to come to that. But also athletes all the time are like, I'm about it. Like, yeah. And, and the way I frame it, especially in major league baseball is, could you imagine, could you imagine working so hard physically and you make it to the big leagues? Like you have it, you have all of the physical abilities you need, but then mentally you lock up or mentally you choke or you fail or you can't do it or you have a breakdown or a panic or whatever it is. Could you imagine? And they're like, like, it's like crickets. And it's like, that's, that's my worst fear. And that's also their worst fear, right? You work so hard physically. They know they have to be physically at some level of experience to succeed there, but it's so easy to get lost in the sauce and, and forget about the mental aspects. And yet you get there and it's crazy. It's something you've never experienced, something you've always wanted to experience, but yet something you never have. And so that's usually a pretty easy sell. It's like, could you imagine achieving your goal physically, but not being there mentally, and then you don't achieve it. And it's like, no, let's go, let's practice. Let's, what do I need to read? What do I need to do? And so it's really cool. But no, I think, I think the hard sell too, is when you're not struggling, it's like, everything's good. Like I'm good. I don't need anything, Hannah. Everything, everything's flowing. (laughs) I'm good. And, And it's true. And so actually one of the really big things I try to challenge people with is, you know, when, when things go wrong, and I actually learned this working with the fire department, right? When things go wrong in the fire department, like let's say someone dies, right? Something tragic happens. There's a book like this thick of everything that went wrong. Like, what do we need to change? How do we need to grow? When things go well, there's literally like a check mark completed. Like nobody invests, nobody figures out why did things go well? What, what did we do correctly? And I think athletes and performers fail to do that too right I think we're really easy to figure out everything we did wrong today I didn't eat this healthy I didn't work out long enough I didn't have these conversations right I didn't read for an hour today but it's also like what did you do right today and especially like while we're performing or or if you have a good game or a good presentation or hell a good zoom call why did today's zoom call go so well like it doesn't just happen And it's such a simple concept, but like, seriously, if you have a book and every time you have a good performance, you're writing like, Hey, I did this. We started off strong, started off with a joke. Hey, I did this. This link didn't work for the video. Scratch that next time, you know, whatever it is, like you're constantly building this like yearbook for yourself that, you know, if I do this, I'm setting myself up for success instead of like, when shit hits the fan, you come into the mental skills coach and you're like, what do I do? And we will figure it out, but we're starting from square one where we could be starting from square thousand and fifty two because we can go back and flip and we're like, well, let's look at the last time you performed really well. And let's just go down the line of those things. And I guarantee you there's something so small and minute and simple that you're just forgetting to do because newsflash in baseball and in everything and in life there's so much constantly coming at us that there's literally no way to remember it all and and sometimes when you're focusing on something you forget to do this this tiny movement could make the hugest adjustment in your swing and so it's like you just need to and and I can't tell you how many conversations I have where guys are like why am I not doing that and I'm like that's okay like that's what we're here that we're here to just serve as a reminder sometimes like I'm not here to give you mind-blowing information I'm here to kind of acknowledge the stuff that you already have and help and make it work for you instead of against you. And so I think, I think a big part is making sure we're evaluating good performances just as equally tough as we're evaluating the bad performances. And I think, I think that's a really good way to sell the whole proactive versus reactive approach. Um, Yeah. I think I answered all 17 questions. At least sixteen of them. Um, <laughs> sixteen. No, and I, no, I, 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 I love that concept. I made a note here that focus on, <clears throat> focus on what well. I mean, you think about, and as I know these coaches are listening, I mean, what do most, using the sports analogy, what do most after game talks consist of? M- most of them are on what didn't go well, what we got to do better tomorrow, you know, that kind of thing. And so, to, to your point of, and I like how you said that, like evaluate them just as stringently as as you know like get after those two like yep. you know to break them down like what was this thing what start i mean all those little pieces which i think that's an an i mean you know i, I used to coach basketball but being 
you know, I guess that, that tendency is like, we got to get better. What can we fix? You know, go into that place. And, and yet, you know, for, for the, for the, for the coach to do that with themselves, coach with other players and teaching their players, you know, that, that valuation piece, which, you know, another plug for the guys that always grind, they happen to have a tool for that. If you want to like evaluate things after the game and you know what you did really, really well too. So, you know, those, those notebooks are phenomenal. For that. And then, um, to, to, so let me ask you this. So kind of as a follow-up to that one, and you mentioned yeah. it in your story, you talked about the, 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 the confidence piece and that. So, so kind of going off that line, what are, what are some other things that, that, that you did to kind of like, you know, as an athlete to, to build confidence that you did when you moved into this, this career and, you know, things that coaches can share with their athletes. Cause I mean, that's the big, how do I get them to be more confident? How am I going to get them to play with, be able to play with confidence and, you know, and I know these things kind of link together, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I love that you just asked that question. Mm-hmm. Um, confidence is such a, hot top always has been always will be like everyone's like okay we got to be as confident as possible and from my own experience I have a pretty unique experience and and I believe this is why I believe what I believe about confidence and I, I like just throwing this out there like mental skills are very much variable per person like what works for me and makes me the best performer and the best athlete could destroy your career it may not work for you and and that's that's one of the hardest but best parts of my job is like, okay, let's try. There's so much trial and error. And I feel like people, especially athletes, like sometimes are very like, like it, it didn't work. I don't like it. Mental skills suck. And it's like, okay, hold on. let's reel it in. Okay. That didn't work for you. That actually worked for me and made me, you know, made so-and-so an all American, whatever, $32 million contract, whatever, but it doesn't work for you. And that's okay. Let's figure out what does. And so the reason I believe in that is because so my entire college career, like it, it's it's funny looking back, like I was probably the person on the team with the least amount of confidence. And it was it it wasn't because of my ability, it was because I always felt like I was a year behind, right? Because I took a year off, I hadn't right. played all the time. Like there was all these like almost excuses, but also like I was like, why would I be confident in my ability when I know I haven't been playing for 12 straight years. I played for eight straight years, took a year off, and I'm like three years in again, but like I'm still, you know, there was always this huge doubt and I literally never had confidence. And what I would do is I would try to find confidence in other people, friends, significant others, parents, the coaches, and it was constant letdown. Like every now and then you'd get like a little bit, hey, like whatever. And I'd be like, okay, you're right. Like, and I'd feel temporarily better. But like deep down again, that bottom of the iceberg me, like I wasn't confident in me. And it wasn't until long after graduation, right? When I'm like deep into my master's program, when I realized and had this kind of aha moment of the only way you're going to create this confidence that you want is by creating it for yourself. And like the source of your confidence has to be you. And like looking back on my years, I was like, I wasn't confident at all. And that sucked. Like I never felt good enough. I never felt worthy enough. I never felt like I could be what I knew I could be, but I felt like, like I just couldn't do it. And you can't really explain it except it was such low confidence. And now like through this, it's like after time and time again of people saying like, you're just so confident in your ability. I'm like, yeah, because I believe in me. Like I I believe in, in my hard work. And like, I worked my ass off on the softball field, paid off, didn't pay off, whatever. I work my ass off in the real world and it's paying off. And so it's like, it's almost like that, like constant, like I have confidence. I have a little bit of confidence. I keep working harder. I have a little bit more confidence, keep working harder. But it's like, sometimes what comes first? Like does good performance come first or does confidence come first? Like if I play good, then I get more confident. Or if I'm confident, do I play better? And it's like, what do you think? Like, and so I, I, that's why I love talking about confidence because it's so finicky, right? It comes and goes with the wind. And one of my favorite ways, one of my favorite examples about this is you guys are both former athletes, right? People watching this, I'm assuming we're former athletes. Yeah. Okay. Let's say you have 10, 10 games, 10 competitions, whatever. Of those 10, what, how many of those are the best performance of your entire life? Asking me, asking us this question out of 10, one. Yeah. Yeah, one, maybe one. <laughs> maybe one. Okay. Yeah. Of those same 10, how many are the worst performance of your entire life? 
in our minds, probably nine. <laughs> Uh, maybe like to be really like worst performance. Yeah. Like, like maybe, worst but, performance. maybe one, uh, probably one of those two, I'm guessing one or two of them. Right. Like, so yeah, you're gonna have a couple crap games when you play 10 times. Right. One, so, so it's like this idea that like every single game is going to be the best game of our careers or the worst game of our, our, of our careers is so unrealistic, right? Most of the games or performances in your career are going to be pretty solid. Like, they weren't awesome. They weren't horrible. They were, they were just solid. And so, but sometimes we like, we just like catastrophize both of those in our minds so much that we get so lost. And like, I'm so pissed because today wasn't the greatest game of my life. And it's like, well, I hate to break it to you, but you're only going to have one of those. So it's pro it, it may not be today. It might be today. And that would be really rad, you know, but it may not be today too. Um, so it, it's just like, Really, again, I'm, I'm a huge believer in making things real um, because I, I believe that our minds don't believe in, in incredibly negative situations and they also don't believe incredibly positive like self-talk. And, and I don't knock positive self-talk. I think it's amazing. I think if your affirmations are true and, and real that they were, but I think there has to be some type of real, like if I was telling myself back in college, like I'm going to hit a home run every time I walk up to the plate, like my bullshit meter is going to go off and it's going to actually have m like maybe more negative effects than it actually would have positive effects. And so that's why like in college I was real, but I was probably real pessimistic, like real slash borderline pessimistic. Um, and now I'm definitely real optimistic. So, so like now looking back, if I was in college, I would be like, you know, I have struggled, like, let's be real, but I'm also working my ass off. And I know this picture and I know this scouting report and chances are I know what's coming and I'm like, odds are in my favor, right? That's not saying I'm yeah. walking up to the plate and I'm saying, I'm going to hit a home run today. Like I'm feeling it, but it's also not walking up to the plate saying this pitch is really good. I don't have a chance. Right. And so it's, it kind of all comes back to that for me. That was a whole lot of answer to the confidence question, but like, I, I really am super passionate about that. And I think the other question I want to ask you is, have you ever felt extremely confident, okay, and gone into a performance and played horribly or performed horribly? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah, 100%. Okay. Vice versa. Have you ever felt not great and like today's not going to be a good day and then you go in and it's not too bad? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, for, for sure. So <clears throat> what does that tell us about the correlation between confidence and good performance? yeah it's it well it goes back to your thing it's kind of that it kind of can come and go it can it can be fickle it can <laughs> it right can, it, right exactly and so to my message to the athletes is just because you it, it's a feel confidence is literally a feeling I feel confident I don't feel confident just yeah. like sometimes we feel tired like I'm I'm I'm, I'm exhausted but that doesn't mean I'm asleep in the middle of this zoom call right now right I'm not taking action because of that feeling or maybe, maybe I'm really mad at something and I could punch a hole through a wall, but I'm choosing not to punch a hole through the wall because that's an action following the feeling. So if you think of confidence as literally a feeling, it's like, just because I don't feel confident, that doesn't mean I have to perform poorly. Like, and so like, it, it's, it's being real with yourself and noticing, okay, today I don't feel very confident. Like I know I don't have it today. So by God, I'm going to have to fight through it. To, to like get this done today but just because I don't feel confident doesn't mean I still can't get it done today and, and and so that's the like boosting side right and then the humbling side is like I'm feeling it today but hey hey you know that's great that's a nice feeling but like let's make sure we're focusing on what we know we should be focusing on instead of getting like too overly confident overly cocky which we talk about a lot which actually brings me into my definition of what mental toughness is and it's being able to focus on the right thing at the right time. Mm. And like, it's really, really simple, but like the most mentally tough athletes, like they can be playing really well and not get over themselves or too confident or too cocky and lose focus. Like they're still able to like, what's the goal? What am I working on? What am I focusing on? And same goes if you're performing poorly. Like if you're performing poorly and you like let it defeat you and all of a sudden you're focusing on all the things you're doing wrong, then you lose focus on what you actually should be working on and doing in that moment. And so to me, like mental toughness is straight up being able to focus on the right thing at the right time. Sorry, that was a lot. No, it's, it's, but, but <laughs> it, it, it is, and it's not because you broke it down into some simple stuff. I mean, I, and I, I, 
loosely use the word simple, simple, but not always easy. Um, but to your, I mean, I love the thing that you talked about that it, it's, you know, the thing I'm going to go back to the very first thing you said. And again, for, you know, for coaches listening, I think this is so important for them to, to remember is that it's variable per person, you know? And so when they, they, they throw out an idea, a thing, and you know, it's like, okay, so it, it, it didn't work. It's not a magic pill. You know, you got to kind of figure. So I think that's, you know, super important for, you know, if I'm a coach sitting there listening, I mean, that's a really good piece. Um, at, you know, the, the, the confidence from, from within. And then, but the other part too, there is I was like, yeah, how many of these guys on this call have athletes that, and I love, I don't know if that's an actual word, but I love the word catastrophize. Um, that's an awesome word. Yeah. But they, <laughs> you know, yeah. But I was just listening to a podcast and they talk about how we tend to like, you know, we get these negative emotions and then we just like fan the flame, like, woo, let's turn this little candle into a freaking inferno. You know, <laughs> now we got an explosion going on and, but catastrophize but yeah so like for these athletes that do that so so let me ask you one more and i'm i'm, I'm watching my phone also i've got these coaches texting me and they're like ask her this ask her this <laughs> so, so my thing is austin i don't know if you can because i got one from abe and he's like yeah hey, i can't get on the zoom call so i don't know if you can repost can you like repost that little that link just in case people are trying to get on it and now can't find it I, I don't know if you can do that or not i have no idea that's way beyond my my skill set but um <laughs> Yes. Anyway, so so my, I'll ask Hannah one more question. And I'll turn it back to you. Think so. One of the questions I got from somebody was it talked about like confidence and and confidence versus being prepared and like you know how do you kind of like maybe talk about how those things kind of go together? Um, you know, it was kind of like your thing of okay, you get the results. Does the confidence, confidence results? What happens there? And kind of yeah. a, a similar a similar type approach to it. But he was just asking me, yeah, like what you know, and knowing that it's not quite that simple. But how how do how do you kind of sometimes explain to athletes how those work together, you know, from an importance of prepared? Uh, yeah. Yeah. i love that. <laughs> um, and I think, I think first and foremost, um, I think sometimes you first and foremost, you can always control your preparedness. Sure. So there's, there's three things that I say, like, this is a whole nother conversation, but there, there's so many uncontrollables in life and in baseball, right? Like, if you really break down like all of the things you cannot control in baseball, in, in any sport, it's a lot. Like I ask pitchers, can you control if you throw strikes? And they're like, you know, at first they're like, I think so. But then they're like, you know, they're like, I don't know, like maybe not. And real, and it's real actually confident like, answer. <laughs> right. Right. And it's like, you, you actually can't control that. Right. Because it may be a strike. The ump might call a ball. Like, or you may throw a strike and he may crush, you know, like, it's just like, there's so many variables, but the, the three things that you can control, and this is kind of another cliche, but I, I believe in this, is the acronym APE, A-P-E in sports psych in, in the world. I mean, and the first one is attitude, right? The third one is effort, which is kind of cliche, like you can always control your attitude and your effort. But the second one is prepared. You can always control how much you prepare and that's in everything that's in nutrition that's in the weight room that's in the mindset that's in your routines that's and and i'm a firm believer in that like and and if you're prepared like you obviously like feel more confident in whatever you do you know you talk about the this the kid who has studied for the test versus the kid who hasn't you know you walk in and you're like i'm feeling good i don't need to cram or or whatever it is and and you know the other kid who's like huh, this is not going to be good because i haven't even like studied for one second but at the same time, I caution anybody who like pulls those together because again, I think confidence is kind of its own thing. You can prepare all you want and still not feel confident that day. You may wake up and just like, I don't feel good this day, right? That happens all the time. We wake up and we're like, I, it's just, it's this feeling I have that even if you've prepared perfectly, like you still may not feel confident. And so that, that's why I go back to like, remember that confidence is a feeling and, and just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean you have to act and respond in a certain way. And, and of course, I, I definitely believe that the more prepared you are, your confidence may go up a bit, like just naturally. Um, but that doesn't mean it's, that doesn't mean like grind it out, you know, for 20 hours before the game. So you're as prepared as possible and you're going to wake up feeling incredible. Like you may wake up feeling like shit because you didn't get enough sleep because you had to get too prepared, you know? And so it's like, it's this common like give and take that you, you, you have to figure out what you need. And, and that's like, to me, if I was like trying to track like, okay, this is how prepared I was. This is what I did. And this is how confident I felt like start seeing if there's any like 
if, if I prepare this much, this is how confident I am. Like try, maybe try to track that. And again, you can always, you can always try to aim for that certain level of confidence. Okay. I know if I prepare for 30 minutes every night, that's when I feel my mess. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm not like, I didn't do anything. And that's when I set myself up for the most confident like person or who I am, but also know like I could do the, per I could prepare perfectly and still not feel how I want to feel. And I think that is the true mental skill, right? Is knowing like, yeah. just cause I feel how I don't want to feel doesn't mean I have to perform poorly, right? The, the mentally weak athlete is going to be like, I don't feel good. And it's, I'm chalking it up as a bad day and it's going to be a bad day, right? The old Henry Ford quote, that's like, if I think I am, I am. If I think I'm not, I'm not, or I can't, I can't, right? I can, I can. And so it's the self-fulfilling prophecy is a real thing. Um, but it's, I just throw caution into the wind on, on confidence because everybody feels like they have to be so confident. And I'm like, you really like, I know we like to feel that, but that doesn't mean you have to feel that. And so I, I think that's super you, important. You realize that every person on this call, their head just went. <laughs> I hope so. I no, hope but so. that's, but no, but it's, it's, and I'll say this last thing before Austin asks his questions that, 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 that piece you said just a second ago, you, you were talking about like the, you said, that's the real mental skill. Like, the, the, the kind of understanding that difference thing. And I was like, yeah, we could start a whole thing on the, I call it, I'm going to call them just because is, you know, just because you've prepared does not mean you'll have a bunch of confidence. Just because you feel a bunch of confidence, you still might, you still might suck just because you, mm -hmm. you know, so you could do a whole, you know, but anyways, back to your point of like, I, I love that you pulled that little piece out of there. That's really what the mental skill is. It's not the, it's not you with the confidence part. It's the understanding the difference and understanding these, you know, understanding that at a deeper level, like you said, that, it, it doesn't always, you know, work that, that the way and the way you, and I love the whole thing about too, that it's a, the, what I write, Oh, the, the, you don't have to do that. The, the, it's the action that follows the feeling. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you talked about that, about, you know, the actions can be different. So no, I, I love all that stuff, but I, I do. In fact, I just got a, I just got a text from my buddy that was just like, yep, true that was his, was his <laughs> way that you were saying no. So he's, he's listening anxiously. So cool. So Austin, Austin, I know you got a couple more. Yeah, no, this is, you've hit the honey hole, Hannah, with the confidence factor. I know for Dean and I, like, this freaking fuels our flame. And for you, yeah. how passionate you are, and I love this. Um, you mentioned internal motivation. And I think internal motivation is key, especially if you really have a dream and a vision to go where you want to go. You've got to have some internal motivation to get you through those times when it sucks. Like an old coach used to always tell me, embrace the suck. Okay, well, it's not always going to be easy, sunshine and rainbows. Like, we're going to have to go through some shitty times to get to where we want to go. And that's what makes true champions. And I think that's what grit is, is getting through the shitty times to get us to where we want to go, even when we don't feel our best. So I know there's some athletes out there who have asked some questions and a few coaches, too, that are, that are really curious about when an athlete isn't feeling that confident, right? Like, now you've identified the signal. I don't feel confident. Whatever reason, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, you know, just a terrible pregame BP and I made an error and a ball hit me in the face, whatever it was, right? What <laughs> advice do you have for them to start to build that mental skill over a long period of time? Does it come through uh, committing to yourself? Does it come through maybe your pregame routines and, and just life routines? I believe in the, the life routines, own your morning, own your life. I think that's key right there as well to develop that confidence. Like what do you recommendations do you have for somebody who's struggling with that confidence piece and they just can't seem to get over that hump. What advice do you have for them? Yeah. So uh, I think that's a really good question. And unfortunately, I think the answer is different for every single person, right? I think like if there was one answer of here's what you do when you don't feel confident, like I wouldn't have a job. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think it comes down to, which is if you listen to any podcast or anything I've ever been on, it usually comes back to awareness, right? This is one of my biggest philosophies is know thyself. Like you really have to know who you are and start figuring out when, when I perform at my best, what do I do? What do I feel like? <coughs> like, what am I bringing to the table? You know? And so I think it all starts with literally knowing who you are off the field. Like what kind of person are you? Are you a super outgoing person? Are you a super like introvert, extrovert? Are you, are you the guy in the locker room who's playing games before the, the game, like ping pong tournaments, like running around with the music loud? Or are you the guy in the corner? Um, and then I think it comes down to knowing your, when you play, what kind of a player are you? And, and really figuring out what is the difference between 
when I'm off the field and when I'm on the field, are they similar? Are they different? But then making sure you're doing, so it, it all starts with knowing who you are and then knowing who you are when you're performing your best and then becoming aware of where am I at on my scale of where, where I should be when I'm playing my best. And if I'm not there, what do I need to do to get there? And I think that's the hardest part. It's like, some of us are super hyped. Like I was kind of the loud person in the locker room, obviously like, like hyping everybody up, going around giving pep talks. Like if you needed anything, I got you. Right. And then there's other people who they get ready and they're like the quiet ones. They're like, don't talk to me. I've got my own headphones. in. I'm listening to Mozart, whatever it is, you know, um, it doesn't matter. There's not a right or wrong way. There is a right or wrong way for you. But just because again, just because I'm doing it one way, doesn't mean it doesn't work for somebody else another way. Um, but then it's a matter of figuring out how do I get into that zone? But the most important part is knowing that you may not always be able to get into that zone, right? Like I'm, I may like, if I fail a test, like in college, if I failed a test and I was mad and had a fight with my boyfriend or whatever, you know, whatever happens, like I may not be at my best on that day of the game. And it's like, it's, I have to be aware that I'm not at my best and then kind of one of the things I always come back to is maybe today I'm at 50%. And so it's like, I'm going to bring a hundred percent of my 50% for the day. Like just cause I'm at 50% doesn't mean I'm going to bring 10%. Right. And so it's, it's, it's again, it, it's knowing yourself. It's knowing what to do when you've got it all, when you've got everything going right for you and when you've got everything going wrong for you and anywhere in between and kind of knowing where do I need to be? And then you have to figure out the strategies and techniques of if I'm too high, how do I bring myself back down? If I'm too low, how do I bring myself back up? You know, whatever it is um, that you're trying to achieve on and off the field. And I, and I think that's a really, really, really big challenge to know yourself and to really be able to self-evaluate and, and, and look inside is not always the easiest thing to do. And, and sometimes you need somebody else to help you with that because um, sometimes you don't see it. Um, and so it, it, it's, it takes a team, I think, on that. It takes somebody you really trust and, and somebody you can work really closely with um to figure out that all of that mm, that's huge the self-awareness piece being able to dig within you know dig within yourself i'd mm -hmm. say i think especially in sports like as athletes we're always told mask your emotion like let's put on the front that everything's okay that when i go home like i'm all good when i went over four it's okay when i fail it's okay i can't show emotion i can't identify the signals i can't throw my helmet or whatever it might be and i, I love how you hit on the fact of the self-mastery like know thyself like let's get to know us we try and get to know everyone else i'm trying to get to know hannah and dean and abe and, and coach wanica but guess what let me know me first so i know what ticks for me good and bad and then maybe from there we can develop those strategies like you were saying to get ourselves to that next level now um say it's mid-game let's just go baseball terms now there's a pitcher that asks this question and we can go pitching hitting fielding whatever it is but things may not be going our way and we may be getting racked around a little bit or maybe we're having one of those one out of ten poor performances that you mentioned like what advice would you have for somebody struggling mid-game to flip the switch and say hey i'm stop i'm gonna stop being defined by my results and i'm gonna take each moment and stay in that present moment like the firefighters i love that it's huge like the firefighters do how do i stay in that moment during that time like what's, what's some maybe a tool an actual tool that you can offer to somebody in that yeah. So I think, I think that comes down again, it comes down to you. If you're, if you are performing poorly and you're in the middle of the game and you haven't thought about that poor performance before the game, mm. you may be SOL. Like you, if you don't have a tool to use in the middle of the game, like I can't tell you to just take a deep breath. Like some people may tell you just take a deep breath. Everything will be fine. And like, the reality of it is it's probably not going to work if you haven't practiced it and you haven't put in the work beforehand it's probably not going to work during the game which is exactly why you should have these planned out right it's i call them contingency plans right it's in the military they have all kinds of contingency plans right like if you think about it they don't plan on like driving and, and hitting an iud right a landmine in the middle of the ground in the middle of like and blowing them up but if they do everybody has a plan and what they should do with it and so like I talk about this all the time. Like you don't want to plan to fail, but if you fail, you've got a plan. Like I know what I'm going to do. If, if I'm having that shit day, if I'm having that worst performance I've ever had, here's two or three things that I know specifically work for me, right. That, that I need to pull. And so for me, one of them was like, I had to yell at myself 
and this is kind of what, what I was alluding to in the beginning on like positive self-talk, like mm. my positive self-talk was pretty negative sometimes. And that's why I like, I don't talk. I really don't talk positive and negative self-talk. I talk helpful and hindering self-talk, right? Sometimes helpful self-talk is like getting in your own ass. Like, Hey, let's go fucking figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, that worked for other people that may not work. That may be hurtful self-talk. And so, but also for me, if I was like, it's okay, Hannah, like everything's going to be all right. Like technically that's positive self-talk, but that's hurtful self-talk to me. That's not getting me where I need to be. And so it, it, that's a solution one can use. Um, I think another really big one is a reset routine, right? If, if you, and whether you're hitting, whether it's in between every pitch, whether you're in the field playing defense, it's still in between every pitch. If you have a reset routine, a solid reset routine that you do the same thing every single time, that helps in the games when things just aren't going your way. Because typically when things aren't going your way, you start thinking, what can I change? What do I need to do? What adjustments do I need to make? When the reality of it is, you should, again, going back to being mentally tough, focusing on what you should be focusing on at the right time, is you should just be sticking with whatever your normal routine is and staying within who you are, not trying too hard, not saying, screw it, I'm not doing anything I want to do, like, right, like overreacting, you should still be like, all right, you know what, I'm not playing good, but what do I do in this situation, right, versus I'm not playing good, shoot, I got to make up for it, right, and, and all of a sudden you're tighter, because typically that's what happens when we're not performing well, is we get out of the zone, and we forget, like, baseball 101, or performance 101, like, what should I be doing right now, so it, to me, it's like, Again, it's going back to being real with yourself, like knowing, okay, huh, today is not going great. It's not been my best performance. I'm aware of that. That's okay, right? Not turning that feeling into an action and, and the thought stoppage and then the thought reframage of like, okay, here we go. It's not been great, but here's X, Y, and Z of what I need to focus on. Let's get real with ourselves. Let's hit ourselves with the facts, right? So it's like things mm -hmm. haven't been going great that doesn't mean the rest of the game doesn't have to go great. Like that means that we could still turn it around. What do I need to do in this very moment right here, right now to help me perform at my best? Like, or, or, or not even at my best. Just like, what do I need to do right now? Like what, if the ball's hit to me, what do I do? Right? Like, again, going back to just the basics of what you should be focusing on, because again, we have this, we always catastrophize things in our mind of like, things are going bad. Everyone's going to look at me. This next ball's coming to me and I'm going to miss it. Or I have to be perfect on this. And next thing you know, we're not perfect on it. And so I think it's, it's really just coming back to the basics. So again, I don't think that just happens if you haven't practiced it. And I think that's what makes it challenging is nobody thinks about failing until they're failing. Mm. And so you, you got to think you have to be proactive and like, let's, let's just have like one or two things that like, let's say a crazy day happens and you have a bad game, which like, you ask any player like they're going to be like hopefully an honest realistic player is going to tell you I'm going to have multiple bad games like and like I, I kind of jokingly with my hitters I'm like I hate to be the bear of bad news but you're going to strike out like you're going to strike out and like what are you going to do when you strike out and and nobody are you know but it's like nobody wants to talk about it everyone wants to pretend like we're just going to hit every time we go up to, up to the plate but it's like the reality is you're going to strike out so you should have a plan when you strike out like what's your plan when you strike out is it to get mad? Is it to throw your helmet? Is it to overreact? Is it to underreact? Is it to not care? Is it to be Mr. Cool? Like whatever it is, like, I don't really care what it is as long as it's helpful to your performance. Mm -hmm. And like, I've had somebody ask me, like, do you get mad if people throw their helmets? And I'm like, is that helping their performance? Maybe they need to like release some steam and then they're fine. And if it is, is it a great look? No. Am I going to be getting mad? No. If that helps you, like, and so I think it's, Again, it kind of goes back to knowing thyself, focusing on what you should be focusing on, but also having that contingency plan, even though we don't want to talk about failure, we don't want to talk about messing up, like you're going to, you're going to fail, you're going to mess up, what your technology is going to mess up, what do you do when that happens, you know, and, and I think that's one of the most important parts of mental skills is, is having that toolbox with you at all times and pulling out, let's see if this works today, let's see if self-talk works today, let's see if a breath works today, you know, cause again, too, like you may know what works some days and some days it may not work. And that's the harp. Some days you're just having an off day and like, you can't just all of a sudden think I'm done with baseball. Right. You wouldn't say like, I'm quitting today. Today was an awful day. And it's like, you, you shouldn't do that with mental skills. You shouldn't do that. If you have a bad day in the weight room, like we have bad days 
and, and that's the hard part is your mind plays those tricks on you and and makes you feel like you should just walk away and the reality is hey it's a bad day it's okay like you're allowed to have these bad days so mm. sorry another long-winded answer to your no I got three things. One, I'm passing you the mic. So you're now the new host. You can host this every week. I'm sure we'll have more attendees and more fired up. Two, when things go bad, like the Zoom link, we create another one and we post it back in. Boom. And then three, the self-awareness. This goes into everything in our lives. And that's why I love what you're talking about because it's not the, the, the cookie cutter, hey, do this and this and this and you'll be okay. Well, it doesn't work that way. Like, for me, certain things are going to help me. Meditation and visualization really help me get back to center because my thoughts go rampant. But some other people, maybe like for you in, in sports, is get fired up, punch a wall, and just go freaking batshit crazy in the dugout. And that gets me amped, ready for the game. Like, we're all different <laughs> human beings. And that's the best part about what you just talked about, especially with the failure plans and adding in different skills that we can use when things go wrong. And I hope the coaches out here are listening in to – some of these tools that they can use for their real life too, because right now we're going through a tough time and, and everybody knows that it's, it's not like it's, it's hidden, but it's a great opportunity to grow in this aspect and to learn some new skills to give to our players. And I want to ask you one more question and then Dean, I'll kick it off to you to finish this up is who has been like, you you mentioned in your senior year of college, where you had that professor who really just hit home, fired you up, got you going, who has been some of your like biggest mentors and, like guidance counselors when it comes to this field and who have you really looked up to has helped you grow in, in, into this new position that you've been in? Yeah, I would, I would have to say um, if there's one person I would say really impacted my career, it would be um, Dr. Bernie Holiday. Um, he is actually the director of mental conditioning for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, and he was my boss um, at my first ever internship in the baseball world. Um, and it was, and it was so cool because this is kind of what we talked about, um, a, a, a while ago now, um, but was this whole aspect that like so many people have the information, but the relationships you build is what gets the information out and sticky and actually impacts players. And he taught me that he taught me that like, like, again, people want to know that you care before they care what you know, like. Uh, I heard that every single day and like I saw him do that and I saw him build those relationships and it taught me like I can memorize like intro introduction to sports psychology 101 and like if I don't build that relationship it doesn't matter if I can't build a relationship with somebody if I can't um really be empathetic with them and feel the position that they're in and support them in the most non-judgmental way possible then it doesn't matter if I have the best things in the world to say to help them. Like it, it, it it's not going to get in. They're not going to believe it. They're not going to buy into it. And so he really, really taught me the power of relationships and the power of taking what's in the book and actually put it in, putting it into action. Like it's two totally different things. Like you can read all the books you want you can have all the knowledge you want, but actually giving it and giving it a, in, in a way that different types of people want to hear it is, the hardest part right and like knowing your audience knowing when to cuss like I cuss all the time like because but like you got to know your audience like and and some people are like loving some people are like whoa like and it throws people off you know but it, it's it's really knowing your audience building those relationships and, and building that bridge between a textbook and actually the applied work and so he's awesome at that he's he's been in our field he's like one of the longest in our fields and baseball has been in the longest so that's that's he, he's awesome it's amazing i love hearing i love hearing who's influenced someone because you're usually a pretty, yeah. pretty much a product of the person who you've looked up to for so long and um no you're doubt. doing incredible work and it's incredible to see dean i'll let you kind of finish off with whatever questions you may have as we wrap no up. no i just just two two like two comments and then two quick questions one from somebody that texted me but i, I love hannah that you i'm gonna go back to that question when you were when, when austin asked you about so you're in the middle of the game you're struggling and and i love the, the comp the comment that like if you if, if you haven't been practicing anything and you didn't say these exact words but you're kind of screwed like yeah. you, you know what i mean but that's 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 like harsh reality like that's that's the importance of this thing and just you know again for for coaches listening to like man that's that's kind of that anchoring in you know type thing that yeah if you're if you're not doing these little things because that, that that moment is coming like it's you're going to be in the middle of a game and you're going to be sucking like it's <laughs> it, it's it's not a it's it's not a it's not a you know an if it's just a win 
and and how many times and what do you do? So I just I love that you just you brought that point up there. And then the other one, and I love that we circled back to this thing with Austin's question about the the the, the gentleman that you work with, the pirates, because 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 essentially, I mean, you're asking these you know anybody you're working with, you're asking them to be vulnerable, like to to come and talk about this stuff and to open up about mm-hmm. it and to to do a deep dive self awareness type thing that you know I mean mm-hmm. you, you, when you first opened up with your story, like I was not this and I was not confident, I was not you know and and just the just the, the verbal, I and mean, we all know just verbalizing that thing is a, an incredibly powerful thing. I mean, literally telling people, mm-hmm. man, I have no confidence is a, is an incredible confidence builder. You know what I mean? It's this like, you know what yeah. I mean? So I, I love that you circled back to that because, but the ports of the relationship that, that none of the, this, all this information is, is, you know, from, it's kind of worthless if, if the relationship's not there because, because you're asking them to go there, you know, which is, a, sure. you know, whether it's a firefighter or a, an actor or a, a, an athlete, you know, to act, you know, to ask. So I, just, I love that we came back to that. So, so the, the, the two quick ones, and this is something that Abe, he's a, he's a coach up in Nevada. Um, you know, I'm going to go back to when we were talking about the reinforcing, you know, kind of reevaluating the positive side as well. And what he asked was, he said, you know, he said, ask her how she goes about reinforcing positive feedback on good games. And in terms of like maybe for an athlete or, you know, advice for an athlete or a coach in that. And you, we kind of hit on that a little bit, but maybe just, you know, just spend a little more, just another moment on that more specifically, you know, to, to reinforce that positive side as well. Yeah. So I, I love that question. Um, and I think, I think it, <laughs> Again, even in a, from a coach's perspective, you may think that the players see everything that went well and that you just almost assume that they know everything that went well, but yeah. like point them out, like say it like, and, and no, don't just say it, but say the positive things about, this is going to be a world one, about things that they can control. Like, Hey, so-and-so I, I, the ball, the catcher dropped third strike. I don't even know if that's the rule in high school baseball but like and so uh, drop third strike if you run and you sprint it out and still got out like did you guys see that like it's something that they can control and so being positive about the small things that that maybe everybody knows like everybody knows that that this guy hit a sack bunt, sack fly, whatever and scored this guy everybody knows it but acknowledge it and then to acknowledge the things that they can actually have have some control in like a sick effort did you like yeah you missed it like yeah, you're running a dope, but that was incredible effort. And so it, it's, it's, it's rewarding something that's in their control instead of always folk like, can you hit a home run? Like maybe it's, it's acknowledging the at bat after the home run or the at bat before the home run. Maybe they struck out before that, the home run. And that's what you notice. Maybe the thing you say is, Hey, way to bounce back on that second AB. Maybe you don't even say the word home run. You just say, Hey, that was tough. First AB. Second to be, you were focused, you were locked in, look what happened. You know, it, it, it's, it's saying the obvious positive things, um, but also saying the things that you can, you can control. And I'm not saying don't say anything negative. Typically, something I learned from Bernie Holiday is keep it even. If you're going to say three negatives, say three positives, say four positives, right? Say, say, make sure you're balancing that out. Make sure you're not, because again, you're going to have players who, after a game, they're going to have a list of 20 things that they did wrong. And then you're going to have players in the room who have a list of 20 things that they did right. I, I did great. I don't know why we lost, right? Yeah. It's like all, you have both got. And usually, like, if you're a coach and you're watching this, like, you know, exactly who, like, names are popping into your head, whatever. And so it's like you want to balance that, right? You want to build people's confidence, but you also want to make sure people realize, like, here's some actual real self-evaluating that, we, that needs to be done and ways we need to grow. But I think I – think, and, and you want to be consistent, mm-hmm. right? After wins, don't be super positive. And then after losses, don't be super negative. Like try to keep it even kill as much as possible. And I, I tell parents that all the time, like with uh, the post game car ride home, right? <laughs> be as consistent as possible. If you're super negative, be super negative all the time, right? Don't just be super positive when they perform well. Like try to find that balance of here's one thing I think you could have worked on. Here's one thing I think you did amazing on regardless of if they played the best game of their life, the worst game of their life or eight solid games of their life. I think, I think that's, that's the biggest piece that you can do. Well, and I, and, I, and it's, it's so interesting too, that, that you say the thing about give them the feedback on what they can control effort, you know, all mm-hmm. those kind of things. And then you, yep. and literally if you link that back to the question earlier that we, the couple of the questions about this confidence thing and internal and coming from within it's, it, it's almost like in a subtle way, you're reminding them that this was a thing that you did 
you know what I mean? Like, cause we wonder where athletes get onto the thing about you know, all their confidence. Like you were saying earlier, results feel confident. Well, that's, yeah. that's not a good place to be. Um, yeah. you know, that's a, that can, that can be, that can be an unhealthy place to be. So you, what you're saying is, so no, like the, the confidence, I want you to re- realize who you are from, the, from running a hard 90 or, you know, whatever the 100%. thing was or the, the bat before the bounce back, because like, well, I can do that again. Yeah. Yeah. You might not hit a home run when we need you. It, it, when we're down three to two and somebody's on base, you might not, but you can bounce back from that about every time. And, 100%. And so, you know, for, so it's, it's, a, it's a way that a coach can help a player build the internal confidence in, in kind of a subtle way. You know what I mean? And, and that's why I just, you said that I was like, yeah, that is so, so stinking important for them. Um, you know, for the and, coach. And I'll just say this too, like however little it is compliments from coaches compliments from a high superior do so much more than they will ever realize. Like I say that all the time, like, because like they just are got like, Again, like, even though it's a fault, right, to, to search for confidence from superiors and others, we are human beings and we're looking for that. To say one thing, like, it, it goes so far, so far. And so maybe it's even like coaches being able to look inside them and being like, have I said, like, even if this guy didn't play today, maybe he comes in and does one thing, moves a runner, like, we're calling this guy out. You know, it's like, it just does so much more than we have any idea that it does. I mean, you again, when it, one of the things I really try to like make a part of who I am is to not lose how I felt as a player and to remember if I was a player, right? Cause now I'm on the other side. If I was a player, what would I think of this PowerPoint? What would I think of this presentation? What would I think of this conversation? Because I was a tough critic. Like, I, like if you weren't helping me or you were boring or you were annoying or condescending or, you know, I was like, I'm not. Like, I don't need, like, I, I'm like, one of the things I'm really good at is evaluating people and evaluating myself. And then like, I could just be like, no, I'm out. And so I'm harsh on myself, but it's like, remember that, like, re- if you were sitting in the crowd, what would you think of this conversation, this post-game speech I'm giving right now? What do you think? Wow, this guy's a fucking asshole, which sometimes that's okay. Like, sometimes that's the that's message the I want to yeah. give, <laughs> but like, just make sure that the message, like, just make sure they're on the same page. Like, whatever you want to, cons- like, give off, you're giving. And, and I, think, I think that's a strength of mine is to be able to really remember what it was like to be on the other side because it's mm-hmm. so easy to forget that, especially the longer you get away from it. And so, like, on a daily basis, I'm like, hey, remember, like, how you felt, how this conversation would go. And I'd be like, I would hate this. And I'd be like, nope, scratch, let's go. Let's figure something else out. And, and so that's a big part mm-hmm. of of my material and, and my conversations that I have with people. No. And, it, and it's one of those ones that I, you know, so important to, to remind coaches a sense how powerful their voice is. Cause they, mm-hmm. I think sometimes they, they, you know, I, I remember being at ABCA a few years ago and, and Schlossnagel was talking and, and he kind of made the comment that, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't always remember. Sometimes they don't always remember the positive, but they remember every moment you wear them out. And, and yep. so Partially is because we wear them out more often than we do do exactly what you're saying. But back to your point of the, 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 the feedback on a thing they can control. Like that's like, to me, that's, it's like simple, but it's so powerful. I, 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 my little phrase, I love is simple thing, but not a small thing. Like yeah. such a big deal. Um, I love that. So, so last question, kind of a fun one. So we were right before everybody got on the call, we were kicking around. I was asked about that Chicago Bulls Jersey, that Chicago Bulls shirt you got on there. And you were telling me about, you know, having the same outfit when you were three years old. And, and so my question, but you also said that you said, uh, based on, I don't know how many of these coaches are watching the last dance, but it doesn't matter. They'll get it. You said, um, what I heard you say, what I should have said, what I heard you say was, um, you'd had some people texting you about, Oh my gosh, cause the last one had to do with mindset and things like that. So, what were, what was, give us one little kind of nugget off that thing that they hit on, on this last show that you're like, Oh my God, that's it. I love that they said that or that they brought that up or, you know, what was, what was one of those for you? Yeah. So, um, so they talked about, they talked about MJ's mindset and I'm, this is a spoiler alert. If you have not seen the last dance, (laughs) turn it off now, (laughs) go watch all 10 episodes and then tune back into the last few minutes of this. Um, but no, he, they talked about how, um, you know, he retired and came back and I think he retired again and came back again. And they were like, they talked about in his old age, right. And, and, and towards the end of his career, how he realized it wasn't just his physical strength that was going to get him through it, but a combination of the physical and the mental game that was going to get him through it. And, um, not just any part of his mental game, but like the present moment of his mental game is like what made him better 
than anybody else. Um, and there was, there was two quotes in it. I got them written down because they were literally amazing. I take notes during these things because <laughs> that's fine. I'm, I'm owning the nerdiness. That's fine. I'll own it. But one of them was, um, he wouldn't allow what he couldn't control to get inside his head. He wouldn't yeah. allow what he couldn't control to get inside of his head. So if he couldn't control it, he wouldn't let it, like it wasn't even a part of it. And then um, the other one was, I didn't um, write this down, but I remember it, it was, um, why would I think about missing a shot I haven't <laughs> even taken yet? Mm. I, think like, you, I think you tweeted that one, didn't you? Yeah, I, I tweeted the person, but you know, it was I actually a popular it. tweet. But it's, it's <laughs> it like, was. It's, it's, the concept, it's the concept of, right, like, how many of us are constantly just worried and consumed with things we can't control or things that haven't even happened yet. And it's like, um, I'm a hundred percent guilty. We all are guilty. And I had a really cool conversation with somebody um, this week and I was like, I'm a mental skills coach and I work on this on a daily basis. Like it, it, we're not supposed to have it all together. We're not supposed to know the answers to this. It's like constantly figuring it out and constantly reminding ourselves um, of what is actually going to help us and what isn't helping us. And like, I'm giving so much energy, energy to something that I can't even control. Like, and that's wasted negative energy instead of really honing it into something that I can do and something that's productive and helpful to my performance and, and all that. So yeah, it was awesome though. It was chills. It was, it was somebody, one of my players was like, um, do you have googly eyes right now? And I'm like, it's a little weird, but yes, actually, as a matter of fact, I do. Like it was, Awesome, so. speak speak in my language right <laughs> yes, yes as a matter of fact i do so. yeah exactly well no it was awesome to have yeah when you said that i was thinking my wife's little catchphrase of you know i'll ask god aren't you tired right now and she's like i'm not giving any energy to that i love that <laughs> i'm not giving any love energy that. aren't you I a bad move that. i'm not giving the energy to that so to, to his point of you know, why 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 would i think about a shot i hadn't even taken like it's yeah like so simple but it's like how many times do we do that we yeah. and, and again back to your point of in any aspect not just mm -hmm. sports as a mm -hmm. parent. How many times do we th worry about a thing that hasn't happened? How many times do we, you know, as a firefighter, as a performer, as a, you know, I love that thing from the beginning that we're all performers. So awesome. Mm -hmm. So awesome. I'm going to kick it back to you so we can wrap it up and uh, bring, bring it close to an outstanding um, level 10 hour. Level 10 to the max. This was insane. Right? <laughs> the fuego sauce is firing right now. I'm about to <laughs> put a cappuccino on my eggs or something. Um, That's some so, real baseball lingo right there. <laughs> hey, let's go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> You got me fired up. Before I finish this off, close it off, pump you up a little bit. Where can people find you on social media? Because your your pages are great. So where can people find you? Where can we get more of this? Yeah. So my Instagram is my main channel right now. Um, and it's just my first and last name, just Hannah Huseman. And then I think my Twitter is just Hannah.Huseman. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy to find. So perfect. Um, yep. One, I want to thank you for coming on and not giving the bullshit cookie cutter answers that normal <laughs> people are going to do because I don't want to hear it. Dean doesn't want to hear it. Nobody wants to hear that, right? Like you came in with real life actionable tools. And I think as it, going back to player shoes, this resonates because just like you mentioned, like evaluating and, and I was a, a tough critic as well back in, in my shoes. And I remember people coming in and some of them, they just didn't resonate with me. It was like, Hey, here's the presentation. Here's the, the science behind it. The science is great. You've got so much knowledge, mm -hmm. but I need the connectability. And when Dean mm -hmm. and his team came in and worked with us in Nevada, it was like, boom, this is it. I want to do this. Like whatever we're doing here, the vulnerability stuff that we're doing, like I am all in and sold. So for you coming in, no BS, like straight to the point, like giving it real as it comes, that fires me up and I respect the hell out of that. So thank you one for coming on and doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We wish you nothing but the best of luck. Like we'll definitely be in touch with some things. Got a few ideas flowing with this, but this was incredible. And I, and I know like just from the coaches that were texting us and just from some of the things in the chat, this was unbelievable. Um, it will be recorded. I will put this up, send it out to everybody who's in here as well. But thank you, Hannah, for popping on here and doing what you do because you're making a massive impact in many, many lives and probably a lot of lives that you haven't even seen. Don't yet. even know about. Yep. Keep it up. Exactly. And Mental Sweat Mondays. Fire me up. I see it. I think on LinkedIn. <laughs> I'm like, I've been seeing this for a couple months now. I got it. Like we got to reach out to her. See if she's down to come on. So this is sweet. This yeah. is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you guys so much for having me. It's been fun. I love keeping it real. So you guys had awesome questions. So thanks for having me. Let's go. Have a good All night. Right. You Let's too. Go. Yep. Have a good night guys. Bye.